And thanks for joining us. Appreciate you, Ben. I um, just want to start off by thanking our coaches and our staff. Um, you know, recruiting is a team effort, and, and any time you have an opportunity to have a, a, a signing day like we had today, uh, there's a lot of people that, that played a major role in, in getting us through the finish line, including professors here on campus that gave us their time on Fridays and our academic support people. So, um, again, to, when you bring people on your campus and, and recruit them, there's so many people behind the scenes that play a role in, in, in helping us uh, really sell the, the brand of Maryland, the University of Maryland. Uh, so, so, so many people to thank. Um, you know, our recruiting staff did a great job uh, in the building of, of putting together uh, great itineraries and, and plans for how to close the deal. So, you know, Scott Chadwick, Will Christofferson, Marcus Berry, and all of their staff all played a major role. Uh, Shelton Ely as well as uh, a beer chargery, Abby Gorun. Um, try not to leave anybody's names off because they'll be upset. But, you know, this is the day where you want to thank those people because so many little things going to this recruiting process. And, you know, everybody talks about me as a closer and our coaching staff and how they recruit. But there's a lot of other people that played a major role in this. Um, we signed a lot of high quality kids today. And as I've said uh, to our staff, when you look at this class as a whole, and I think I've said this to each one of these guys, you know, I, I really do see this class being kind of the DNA of the player driven culture that we're working to create here. Um, there's a number of these guys that have served as team captains. Uh, quite a few come from programs where they built uh, the, their pro, their high school programs from the ground up, similar to what we're doing here um, at Maryland. Uh, and a lot of these guys, you know, have shown tremendous leadership qualities. And, you know, this class may not rank as high as maybe some of the other classes that we've had before, but I can tell you when it comes to character, leadership, uh, the, 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 the intangibles that it takes to, to create a player driven culture, I feel really, really good about this class and each and one of these guys that, that make it up. Um, we kept a lot of local talent home, uh, which is our goal. Uh, you know, the goal is to keep the right local talent here. We won't get them all, but we need to make sure we get the right ones. And I feel like we did just that uh, as a staff. Um, you know, that's always a priority. I'm also excited that we have nine guys enrolling early, uh, mid, mid year enrollees, and four of the nine are offensive linemen which allow us to really uh, replenish and, and add to that room, which to me is the, the maybe the last piece or the, the missing piece to us taking that gigantic step that we want to try to take this upcoming season. And to be able to have these guys here to go through spring ball up front, get into a jump start on lifting, conditioning, and training uh, will be really uh, beneficial for our program um, as we continue to, uh, to, to grow this thing. So, um, with that, I'll open it up to questions from you guys. Thanks, Coach. Reminder, if you have a question, please send me a chat. We'll start with Ahmed Goodfear. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, getting a chance to uh, add Jason Barham, Andre Broy this morning, um, just two uh, big elite guys, and for them to be local, uh, for them to come out of St. Francis, I mean, uh, how, how did that happen? And then what is the magnitude of, of those two signings? Uh, how did it happen? A lot of hard work, uh, pretty much a sleepless night. Um, you know, I can't tell you that I had any idea that it would happen or, you know, none of our coaches could say that we knew this would happen. But as with all our recruiting, our coaches just continued to remain very diligent in selling the Maryland brand. And, uh, you know, we, we've recruited those guys for two, three years now. Uh, there's some uh, deep rooted relationships that were already established. You know, a guy like Elijah Brooks who recruited him or if, if they could recruit, I don't want to get him in trouble at DeMatha, but uh, recruited him to DeMatha and, and has known him since, you know, sixth grade. I've always told you guys about third party validation and for uh, us here locally to have people that would stand in the gap for us to sell what, what, what great things we've done when we've been associated with some of these third party individuals really, I think, is what pushed it over the edge. I know both sets of Parents would have loved to see their kids stay close to home. Um, you know, they both made decisions early on. And, you know, I think as they got closer to signing day, they started to see the value of what staying at home looks like 
but I also think us being able to show that as a program, we did take a significant step with our program by becoming a bowl eligible team and getting into this cycle, along with the addition of Jones Hill House, our new facility, uh, really uh, gave us some some high, uh, some gave us a, a lot of firepower in terms of being able to continue to press those guys and, and, and sell the Maryland, the vision I have for Maryland football. We'll go to Alex Stacy next. Hey, Coach, just to kind of follow up on that, um, obviously St. Francis is a big power, and, you know, this is these are kind of the first two really big guys you've been able to get from there. Um, what's kind of the importance of being able to get a foot in the door, you know, at a place like that recruiting-wise? Yeah, you know what, Alexander? I, I mean, I've had great success recruiting um, St. Francis over the years, wherever I've been, and uh, we, you know, I don't want to discount the guys we have in our program from there. Ja'Kai Green, uh, T.J. Butler, Joe Burns you know, are all guys that, that played and were part of building that great program that uh, Coach Masai Hallariam, a former uh, Maryland football player, has has built along with Biff Poggi, who, who I have a lot of respect for both those guys who've served as head coaches. And, you know, I think they all know the brand that we have here and what we're building. Uh, we continue to develop great relationships with these high school area coaches uh, to show them that, you know, as the flagship university, uh, we're doing our part to go out and recruit each and every high school in this state that has Division I talent. And, you know, our coaches continue to do a great job of selling the Maryland brand to, to the, the high school kids and coaches that, that are here. And, you know, to be able to get, you know, Jay Sean and, and Andre Roy out of there, uh, those are two of the right guys. I talked about us, you know, getting – some local players, but it's about getting the right local guys and, you know, us uh, trying to develop our offensive line position as well as our linebacker position. Those are the, those were major needs for us. And those are two of the top players in their position groups from this area. So to be able to close the deal and find a way to get those guys to believe in the vision we are, we're set, we're selling uh, is great for Maryland football. We'll go to Emily. Um, now that you've got these guys, I mean, where where does the focus turn in terms of still filling up the remaining spots, probably with the transfer portal, the next signing period? What are you going to focus on there? Yeah, you know, the good thing is, is, you know, these numbers are, are, are moving targets. You know, everybody likes to ask how many we have left. And, um, you know, we have kind of an idea, but, you know, there's a lot of moving parts with uh, roster management is is really, really important. And, you know, as I said before, the transfer portal is a good thing for both players and, and coaches uh, because of the immediate eligibility. I think you'll see 10 percent of your roster leave every year. Just like I've said before, you'll lose a couple of coaches every year. Um, it's just the nature of the business. So for us, we'll continue to, you know, look at the transfer portal. There's also some high school kids that did not make decisions early that we've had visit us. So uh, we'll continue to recruit those guys. And, you know, usually the brunt of our class will be signed like it was today in the early signing period, but uh, we'll continue to try to find the, uh, any, every, any player that can help us uh, improve our roster and give us a, 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 the best chance to continue to build our program. We'll go to Wes Brown. Hey coach. Um, so obviously, uh, Octavian Smith is a guy who um, sort of went off the board uh, in the summer and then sort of, you know, became available later on. What sort of went into the chase to get him and what kind of stuff on and off the field made him kind of like you mentioned, a guy from a local high school that you wanted to bring in? Yeah, you know, his recruiting process was was fairly unique in, in that, you know, he in between, um, we, we were changing receiver coaches at the time. And, you know, I think we offered him sometime in, in late March, early April, uh, he ran a bunch of really fast times at the track meet. Um, you know, some coaches at his high school, you know, Coach Neesmith has uh, always been a, a, a great supporter of, of myself and in Maryland football as one of the, the you know top high school programs in the country. Um, the thing about Octavian's recruiting process is that he really, really uh, put a lot of thought into it. I mean, he was a high, he's a high academic kid that obviously looked at a bunch of the high academic institutions like the University of Maryland. Um, you know, as he said in his video, didn't necessarily get off to the best foot uh, early. Uh, he made a commitment there to Northwestern. And you know, I think one of the things we continue to do is even when a kid commits to another program, we're very respectful of their commitment. We're not like a bugaboo group that are, 
you know, we don't start attacking other schools and negative recruiting. That's not who we are. Uh, we congratulate them, but we also say, hey, if, you know, if it's okay, we like to just kind of touch base with you off and on. And that way, if something changes, we like to continue to recruit you. And I think that that really worked well there uh, for him because when he made the decision to, uh, you know, decommit and open up his recruiting process, uh, we've got a lot of people in that building that are huge uh, Maryland fans and, and want to support us. And uh, he came and gave us a look. You know, I got a chance to get his mom on the phone and talk to his dad and all the people that are important to him in his life. And, you know, he's one of those guys that's going to make the right decision. And, you know, he put a lot of things down on paper. He knows what he was looking for. And then when they came on their official visit, I think that just solidified for him, his mom and his family that Maryland offered all the things they were looking for. And so we got us a, a great leader, a guy that led Paint Branch, the Paint Branch program, I think to a semifinal uh, appearance. Uh, a big time. He was a quarterback in high school, so he's got great leadership skills. Uh, we obviously are transitioning him to the receiver position where, you know, we lose four or five guys at that position, and we were adding a, a really talented playmaker on the offensive side of the ball with, with Octavian. We'll go to Scott Green next. Hey, Mike. Hey, Scott. Um, one of the late additions here today was Max McCree. Um, you know, he's a Juco. Um, so can you kind of talk about, you know, what went into landing him and then how important it is to kind of have a more experienced offensive lineman in this class? Yeah, you know, we, we were looking for either experienced Juco players or transfer portal guys. And, you know, obviously there's still some of those transfer portal guys out there uh, that we feel can come in and help us early and, you know, Max is a unique, has a unique story in that, you know, he's a junior college player, but he was a qualifier out of high school and he actually has four for three years. And we've been able to find these guys, uh, you know, the last few years where they come in and they have more than two years of eligibility. And uh, he's a guy that was highly rated and, and highly evaluated out of junior college, one of the top Juco tackles in the country. Uh, and when we got him here on campus, we, we, we liked his size. We think his best football is still ahead of him um, because we feel like he has the framework to be able to put some size, mass, and strength on. And, you know, with the type of uh, eligibility he has, it's not necessarily important that he has to come in and play right away. But, you know, I think he definitely has the skill set that we're looking for to be able to improve our um, depth and, and, and add to our offensive line room. We'll go to David Barnes. Uh, coach, to follow up on uh, the question about the offensive line, how are these guys that are coming in, how do they reflect uh, any changes maybe you thought over having seen what the Big Ten is like, the defensive line and, the, and the, maybe the bigger guys in the offensive line uh, you've, you've played up against? So where is your sort of recruiting thoughts changed now in your third year? Yeah, you know, our recruiting thoughts haven't changed. We had a system that we put in when we got here. Uh, it wasn't my first rodeo being in the Big Ten, so um, I knew it was important to increase our size, strength, and power on the O-line and D-line. We addressed the D-line last year in recruiting. Uh, it's not something that you can kind of do in, in, at one, in one, uh, one big recruiting class, and so we've had a plan on how we were going to attack it, and as you'll see this year, we're heavy loaded on offensive tackle body types. Uh, you know, we haven't had a bunch of tackle bodies. You know, we had a DJ Glaze a year ago uh, and some of the other tackles we took ended up being guards. So if anything, the premium was taking length as well as guys that had the size potential to add weight and strength and power and, and all these guys. I mean, when you look at Andre Roy, uh, you, you look at Maximus McCray, um, you look at all these tackles, bodies that we took, they, each and every one of those guys, uh, Nonar from down there and Kendrick, both have good size, uh, really broad frames, long arms, the things you look for um, in young linemen that I think, you know, you'll have a chance to build on. Does anyone have anything else? All right. Thanks, Coach. All right, guys. Have a happy holidays if I don't see you. Thanks, everyone.